Welcome back, everyone. Today we have the professional love prove us wrong game. Uh, it solves a big issue I've been trying to figure out how to uh, promote within agile games and uh, so forth. And that would be mainly psychological safety, building trust and empathy. And of course, we're all remote. So how do we do that? And I found this game. It was on Tasty Cupcakes downhill down here. It was posted by D Shill. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce that. But that's the uh, user that was on there. So thank you, whoever you are. And I uh, also want to credit all the people down here that gave us this great example of how to play it. And of course, uh, this is, of course, on a YouTube channel. If you'd like to like, subscribe, buy me a coffee or uh, get flow trained and go through the awesome flow system. Tons of deep knowledge there. There are links in the description below to do so. Uh, but without further ado, we'll start with the game. obviously a little little big here uh but it's mainly just a bunch of questions but just to give you a more of an intro about it so professional love prove us wrong do you remember when you fell in love do you understand uh your partner blindly you felt trust you were able to do a you were able to do amazing things together effort effortlessly uh you can achieve the same with your team but longer lasting and minus the heartbreak and expensive divorce lawyers that's what the uh, that's what we call professional love. Uh, don't believe us? Prove us prove us wrong. And uh, in Mandy Lynn's carton, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get this wrong. Mandy Lynn Carton Catron's. <laughs> I'm like sorry if I butchered that. Modern love essay uh, to fall in love with anyone. Do this, uh, which I've not read this by the way. It's on my to do list. I'm try try to put that link in the description below as well. Uh, she refers to a study uh, by the psychologist Arthur Aaron and others that explores how interpersonal connectedness can be accelerated by a specific series of personal questions. The 36 questions in the study are broken up into three sets, with each set intended to be more probing than the previous one. The inventors of the simulation wanted to explore how the series of personal questions can inspire the creation of a team. Uh, sorry, creation of team-related questions. The idea is that creating your own team-related questions and answering them lead, uh, answering them, will lead also to uh, more interpersonal connectedness within the team. The goal of the game, obviously, is to highlight it here. The goal of playing this professional love prove us wrong game is to help build psychological safety in a team. The game aims to increase the level of trust in the team, which will prove the team, improve the team collaboration, may help the team in agreements, allow for people to build and ask for help, shift from a team conflict uh, to a team that has constructive conflict and help people to grow. Let's create joy in teams. Well, we'll either do that today or we'll see it all fall apart, but let's get started. Uh. Perfect team size is around five players. I'm going to be participating for this one since uh, we've had some players that are not able to join us tonight. And uh, if you want to be a player, or if you want to sub for a player that's not here in the future, please make sure to connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know if you want to do so. I have a few people. Uh, just didn't work out tonight, so I'm going to be filling in. Uh, but always good to have more backups. Uh, the game says to plan for around 60 minutes, so we'll hopefully try to shorten that. Uh, but we'll see what we can do in terms of the video. Um, questions, examples, and of course the credits. So we have, of course, here a large chart that we are going to be filling out together uh, as a team. And what we're going to do is I'm going to roll a dice. I'm going to use dice.virtualworld.net. I'll just share that real quick. That is here. And what we are going to, uh, I'm just gonna roll the dice it is going to correspond to a number over here on the left. And then I'm going to put the question here and we're going to type each one of you, the players are going to type out your version of this question within our team context. And so the context of being on a team to create agile games for the community would probably be a, the context of what we're doing here today. So uh, I will, ooh, and this, I think this moves around. So be careful about moving that around. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to roll the dice. You're each gonna have one minute to make your own version. Uh, there are some examples down here. So for example, 
the question for set one was if you were able to live at the age of 90 and retain either the mind or the body for 30 year old uh the last 60 years of your life which would it be and then they create their own question for the team context of if you were able to decide to stick together as a team or to stick longer to a team or to a topic which would you prefer and so that's someone's ver martin's version of this question so is everyone okay or understand the rules i think maybe we can do one just to kind of yeah we can fill it out all right so i'm gonna roll a dice which i've lost the dice now there's the dice I'm cast the dice seven lucky number seven all right so i'm gonna copy this Maybe I'm not. I'm just going to write it because apparently I locked it. <laughs> Don't lock. Note to self, facilitators, do not lock the questions so that you can copy them. All right. So I'm going to paste that here. Maybe not. As technology fights me and proves me wrong at every, at every point. Yeah, that's just the way it works. All right, so now we're here and we're going to have one minute. Let's all write, actually, let's pick a column. Let's all write our name in the column. So I'm going to choose player five. I got three. And the question is, do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? Well, starting off on a positive note. Yeah. Why, why not, you know, be morbid, macabre? Can we just reform that question into something work-related? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the form the, of the context the... of our team. Yep. <clears throat> all right, and now we all get to dot vote. So everyone... Sorry. Go ahead, what? Sorry, I what did not. Twit is not dot voting. She's just <laughs> sticky voting. <laughs> yeah, I will create some dots here real quick. I like to go orange, as most well, of you might know. So. Like dot, dot voting for the most likely one, the one we should. One that we we all agree feel is probably the best in the context. Yep. So. Uh, step three over here is vote uh, for the question that you would love to have answered by dot voting. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm giving you a vote, James. I uh, appreciate it. Thank I'm, you. I'm... <laughs> YouTube's going to censor us at some point. <laughs> uh. uh... Do you have thoughts on what product will expire? Do you have a secret hunch about how Agile games? How many votes do we have, James? Uh, just one each. Just one, okay. Yep. Hmm. And so, oh, Steve's like trying to go twice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was, well, I was like, I already got five out there. Who's got the? Six one. Like, Fraser's not. He's even. He's even logged in as like what guest pioneer. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, Jeez, so Frazier. now the, get your stuff together, man. Logging, <laughs> <laughs> so now step four: encourage everybody to answer the question voluntarily by writing on post its, then share your answers. After that, pick question. Pick another question. Refer to step one. I like that. So just keep going around. So the first question is, what will end this team? So pick a post-it and write your answer. Well, share your, stop creating answers so we can share <laughs> answers now. All right, who wants to yeah. go first? Well, I'll try to make this negative question positive. I, I said old age, we're going to be together forever. So we all start yeah. dying off. That was, that's, uh, that's, that's my hope. Who said Fraser? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Who, do you think? Who do you think, Steve? I'm your biggest fan, man. 
Oh, Fraser. <laughs> okay, yeah. We could, we could see. <laughs> Who's it? Who did everyone? Was this just the same person? Apathy and unintended commitment that gets us booted from YouTube. Okay. Unintended. Did unedited I... comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gonna be there's something offhanded that is like, whoa, wait a minute here. There's always Vimo. They're not, YouTube's not the only game in town anymore. <laughs> I, I'd hate to have to move all my content though. That would be a, a suck. That might um, be the piece that you edit. <laughs> yeah. YouTube, we love you. You're awesome. Please promote my videos more in shirt in search. <laughs> how, what, what is it? How goes? We I'm not pandering at all. Yeah. <laughs> So. <laughs> this is all professional love don't worry yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly this is what right. this is what agilists do in their free time <laughs> if no one shows okay yeah. it wasn't fun not but they're all kind of the same thing oh, okay got it anyone else want to share anything else about when zoom crashes <laughs> yeah oh. we would pragmatically it. right i mean just conflicting schedules for people that can't yeah. you know can't show yeah. up, stuff like that. But I, think I, run I, run I like topics. the fun answers better. Okay. I think we run out of topics if not ever, enough. If there's always James doing the games, it might we might run out of topics. So just not <laughs> not enough, you know, participation on participation on presentations. Gotcha. Yeah, if anyone wants to come on and uh, you know, make a game and and you know, come present it or facilitate it, we're always good for that. Note to self: Can we not put them on? Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I'm right, gonna move those over here. All right, and I don't know how to move the border. Oh yeah, that, I got that. Okay, you're good man. So yeah, because we're kind of running into the the dock here. Uh, if we could keep those the same size, that'd be cool. Let's just that'd do it off to the right great. here next time. Um. All right, so I'm gonna roll the die, the special die again. The die is cast, and the die is three. My lucky number, actually. The question is, before making a telephone call, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Why? So, all right, we have one minute to uh, make our version of that for our team. All right, so we, I should probably read the questions as a good facilitator. So Tim, Tim Dickey came up with, have you ever thought about what you might say before you actually say it? Oh, Tim my. Nolan, <laughs> before, meeting you, before meeting with your boss, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Why? Sweta, do you prep for presentations, front reviews? Why? And then Steve, uh, before you deal with Tim, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? <laughs> I think I know what's got my dot vote. Oh, and mine, I guess I have to read mine. Do you ever rehearse for your retro talks before we shoot the video? <laughs> I know which one has my vote, so I'm just going to go vote for, vote for that. And for I'm anyone that's vote watching, for, uh, your your offhanded uh, question there, Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone that's watching, we're obviously a very psychologically safe team because we're doing this in our off time. But you can get how this would go. You know what? I like this better. Uh oh. Uh -oh. All right. Uh. You know, I, I do chalk this up to 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 your point, James, which is we, we have a great degree of psychological safety and we also have authenticity, authenticity and transparency, which is in short supply in certain cases these days. So so I have to. Uh... It's low stakes, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's low stakes. It's true. So I'm going to. Uh, it's it's going to be good beer and pizza talk once we we finally get back into uh, you know our normal meetup spaces. So or just, or as these uh, questions uh, come up, we'll see what 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 arises from there. Yeah. Well, uh, what I'm trying to figure out what we should do in this situation because we have a tie from dot voting. Oh no! Does anyone know what happens when we have a tie in dot voting? 
You roll we roll the dice. dice. Yeah, random. Doesn't matter. Okay. So this is going to be one. Anything. Maybe that should be the next person. Anything between oh, odds and evens, one and right? six. Yeah. No. Odds well, and evens. Okay. If it's odd, odd even. Yeah. Okay. Odd even. All right. Here we go. Dice cast. As soon as I find the cast button. That's odd. So we're doing this one. Oh, thank God. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, dodge a bullet on that one. All right. So grab some post-its or I guess make no, use of other ones. How do, I, how do I answer my own question? The question we're answering is... Did you think about it before you put it out there? <laughs> have you thought about what you oh might say before you actually You got say me. It? I didn't even think... Oh. <laughs> Oh, for shame. Sorry, that was a good one. <laughs> so we're answering over on the right-hand side here. So Tim obviously has some very, very deep thoughts. Which one? I mean, right. no one. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought it just ended at lizard brain. So please, I'm going to let Tim go first, actually. I'm going to voluntold. Since you're in a psychologically safe environment. <laughs> Tim, tell us about your Tim, Tim Nolan. All right. So, uh, you know, these are things that I've, I've been working on. I tend to speak my mind. So uh, I, I, I did the yellow ones there in the column. Breathe, then speak. You know, just take a breath. Think through what you're going to say. Uh, often I, uh, you know, open my mouth and insert my own foot. Uh, so I'm always this constant battle between my amygdala and my frontal cortex, you know, just get away from feeling and think about it first and then say it. It's, uh, it's hard for me to do. Is that, was that it? Okay. Those are mine. Now it's all, those okay, are cool. all the ones I did. Cool. Um, what about Tim Dickey? Oh yeah. So I um, let off with what I think is, is truly monolithic consideration to to my favorite philosophers are Aristotle and Plato. And I said, hmm, I might consider doing that sometime. Okay. And then uh, of course I followed it up with my, my Eastern thinking along the lines of Confucius, Zen and the art of thinking before speaking. And then finally, what I frequently hear from my teenage daughters, whatever. Oh god. That's that's always fun. I know that um, one. <laughs> um all right, Sweda, what about yourself? So mine were were in an effort of trying to be humorous, but then I, I realized they're somewhat contradictory as well. So I said rarely, I just go with the flow. Um I I don't think I have many filters, but then I realize I'm like, you know what, I do think things through sometimes, but it depends who's on the receiving end, right? Mm hmm Got to cater towards the audience, or at least try to. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, speaking of, if you're my audience, you have any feedback, if you want to put that in the comments, we'd be happy for it. Um, if you were offended because we were transparent, please, please let us know. Yeah. And uh, another <laughs> shot of tequila for Nolan. <laughs> God, your timing uh, is great, man. <laughs> what about Steve? Steve and Frazier, what can we, uh, what was your... What was yours? Um, I had two. I said uh, too much or too often. And then mostly what I should have said afterwards. Mostly what I should have said afterwards. Okay. Like you figure out what you should have said afterward? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I Hindsight's great for that kind of stuff, unfortunately. Um, well, I said I I do and I say it anyway, which is I think about what I say and then I, then I say, what I, I'm just, I, I, my, my philosophy is if I'm authentic, I will encourage someone else to be authentic, even if they authentically tell me, you know, to go away. So, um, but you know, for the most part, it works 99% of the time. So, and I learn if I don't know something, so it's also great too. Uh, but I do try to make sure I put up here that I do try to make sure I encourage others by what I say or say, 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 there we go. That's, that's what I meant. And Use your then, words, James. Use your yeah, words. Yes, George. Um, or that I'm speaking the truth, at least, you know, if I'm not encouraging someone, at least I'm speaking the truth to them as that will help them to, to this or the situation to grow and for us to grow together. 
is my goal. So, all right. Well, I'll put those over to the side and roll another dice. And we will actually be picking from set two this time. Ooh. I don't know what's going on here with this this outline here. This dot just go. seemed to move. Let's just turn that off. Or let's I don't know what's going on there. We'll just leave That's that alone. Right. Okay. Um so set two, roll the dice. And twelve. Whoa. So it's gotta go from thirteen to twenty-four. So can you make it do that? No, but we're just gonna it's this is obviously number twelve for twenty-four. Gotcha. So. All right. Um <clears throat> if my math is right, in which case, if I get it wrong, please let me know. But we're a safe environment, so pretty sure we're good. Um, how? Although you can set this dice to one and thirty-six, but I believe you're supposed to start and set one, two, and three, and kind of build up is the oh. idea. At least, if I'm wrong, please put it in the comments. But I've been wrong before. It will well, not. We're be not the... playing Dungeons and Dragons, seriously, dude. No, but uh, I will. If you have that agile game, please put that in the comments below because I would love to play that. Um, D and D. Yes, agile D and D. How does your product? You you stumble upon a upon a product owner. Oh he, he gives you a product idea. How do you? He's a level thirty six magician. In the meanwhile. Yes. All right, we have one minute, guys. How do you feel about your relationship with your mother? So now we have our versions of how do you feel about your relationship with your mother? And Tim Dickey wrote, how do you feel about Frasier? Tim <laughs> Nolan wrote, wrote, how do you feel about your relationship with the customers? Sweater wrote, how do you feel about your relationship with your mentor? It's good. Uh, who is it that makes you, who is it that makes you who you are? That's a deep question, Steve. And then of course I wrote, <laughs> How do you feel about your relationship with Fraser? You know, I think <laughs> since since the question came up twice, <laughs> I think we know what the answer is. Well, I should say well, we know the we know the question that we're going to answer. We don't even to... need a dot vote on this. I don't, well, they are technically two different questions. Yours is how do you feel about Fraser, and I said how do you feel about your relationship with Fraser. So that might be. <laughs> A little bit deeper. I don't know. Maybe the same thing. Anyways, I have voted. Two people, three people have voted. Sweta and Tim have voted. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, Come on, Dickie. You can do uh, it. Decisions. <laughs> it really doesn't matter where you put it at this point, unfortunately. From one end to the other end. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So the question we're an answering is... Who is it that makes you who you are? <laughs> oh, is it? Who is it? Oh, okay. I missed so we're answering in this white bit. area over here. <laughs> who wants to go first? I'll lead off this time. All right, cool. Uh, not Frazier. Not Frazier. What That's you said, James. both of them. Yeah, what you said, James. Okay. No, I, but on a serious note, uh, my my family and my relationships with others, you know, um, because I I am a firm believer in accountability. And yes, my wife challenges me a lot. It's probably a good thing. And I also have uh, you know I've got people around me both at work as well as you know with, within the the agile community, and you know it stretches me, compels me to to grow. And I don't like growing. Yeah. It's painful. Very, very painful. Yeah. Um, cool. You want to go next, uh, Sweda? Sure. So I started out with my mother, just because the question started with that, but it is a true fact as well. So she definitely makes a big part of who I am. Um, my siblings. Um, I probably could have put this all under my family, but um, I, I felt like each one needed its own call out because they they serve me differently and, and they create a facet of me that, that's unique. Um, my nieces and nephew, um, incredible. They bring out a completely different person to me and my tribe. So um, similar to what was just said, um, whether it's fr friends, you know, my, my adult tribe is what I really consider my true tribe, like especially when I'm at a conference or in a setting like this. 
um, those people are are incredible and just you know bring out the best in me. So yeah. Even Fraser. Even Fraser. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> I have no right. no problem. <laughs> He's awesome. Yes. <laughs> All right. What about you, Tim Nolan? I put uh, my relationship with my colleagues, coworkers, friends, folks that I, uh, you know, I like to think that I have a, a pretty good balance. I mean, who I am in front of you is the same way I am in front of everyone else. Uh, I like to emulate my mentors. Uh, one of the things I, I thought of recently, I'm really appreciating now that I'm in the twilight of my career, uh, like kind of this youth you know, like I, 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 my mentors now are young people, right? The folks that are kind of learning, you know, just to see the excitement and in, in whether it's agile or, you know, any other industry that, that I'm in, you know, it, it's fun to watch that, you know, so I, I really get joy from that. And then uh, Twitter, I'm on Twitter all the time. And uh, <laughs> I, I do follow a lot of these folks, but uh, yeah, the Twitter the fun ride. Uh, oh, nice. Cool. I'm done. Awesome. What about you, Steve? Well, I start with my friends and family. It's been as I thought about it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I read a lot, so I'm influenced by writers of history and artists uh, and thinkers. And I guess also a big influence on me is uh, people I teach or volunteer with. And of course, myself, you know, I make my own choices. So yeah. I think about your own responsibility in, in deciding who you want to be because you can change yourself. Um, you know, a lot just by deciding to be different. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Well, thanks. That's some good answers. I see. I'm. I'm gonna. Ch I would change not Fraser to Fraser now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to after this. <laughs> see, you went existentially <laughs> deep on me. <laughs> you know, I guys. I know. I know. I'm next, but I know there's no good good answer, right? But I've really thought that we were talking about one person, like who. Like, and then y'all came with multiple answers. I was like, man, but they're all good answers. And I feel like that's like, I can definitely relate to whatever all of you guys said. Uh, of course, you know, I, I, I put Jesus out because that's, of course, who I'm, I'm trying to be like daily. And I am hoping that's who makes me who I am. And that's who my, of course, my faith is as well. So uh, I had to put that there. Uh, but yeah, those are great. We're getting more authentic as we go here. So, and by the way, that's the reason why I said what, what I said. Yeah, you know? like yeah. What, what James because said. Because, yeah, it, you know, it is, it is, it, it's about people past, present, and, and, and hopefully even in the future, the future version of you yeah. <laughs> who can look back and go, wow, the guy I was a year ago is not the guy I am today. And yeah, that, that is Jesus, not Jesus. So just, <laughs> just, just to be clear, like it wasn't some, like, I'm sure Jesus, whoever he is, is cool, but that's that's not who I was talking about. Jesus hey, um, is your biggest fan now. Yes. All the Jesus. All right. Um, so we're gonna roll the dice again. We're still in set two now. And oh nope, we're going to twelve guys. Uh, Cast the uh, dice. Seven again. So that's uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. If I can click the thing. Oh, I lost. I so that's oh. it. I unlocked this and we're just whatever. This is weird. All right. <laughs> Note to self, if you open this template, which will be linked in the description, then you will have to ungroup these before you lock the background down because that's a thing. Here we go. So the after those technical difficulties, we rejoined back and now we are here answering the question or making our own version of this question. If you knew that in one year you would die suddenly. Would you change anything about the way you are living now and why? I'm just going to like, you guys have already done. So I'm just like going to do a thing. All right. So <laughs> do it. Yeah. That's Throw. as topical as you can get. Yeah. So what? Oh, that's Throw a thing. I thought I, was, I thought I was going deep, James. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll get to it in a second. Get to it in a second. What, what is the meaning of life? The original life? question we started with is if you knew in one year you would die suddenly, uh, would you change anything about the way you're living now and why? And uh, Tim Dickey's change of that question to our team's context is what would you change if you knew you might be? Uh, where you might be in a year. 
uh tim nolan's is if you knew that you were in one year you were uh fired suddenly uh what would you change if anything about the way you're living and why and then sweaters is if you if your gig was only lasting one year what would you do differently steve's is what is worthiness and james is uh what is blue because he ran out of time and felt pressure by everyone else being done so um (laughs) Now that there's already dots in the dot voting thing, uh, I guess. Sorry, I couldn't wait. It's okay. Hey, hey, we're, we got we're we coming to a high performing team. So, uh, nominal right. constraints to improve flow. Yep. All right, we're missing one person's vote. Yeah, it's me. I'm just thinking. He's he's contemplating as guest pioneer. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go here because it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, at this point, right. you're right. That's a protest vote. Protest it is a protest vote. vote. All right, so we're gonna move over this white space that I just created again over here, and we were go start answering the question: If your gig was only to last one year, what would you do differently? So I'll go first, since I've all told other people the last couple times. <laughs> I put, uh, if I knew it was going to end in a year, I'd find another gig for one. And then uh, I would go home on time because if I know it's going to end, it's going to end. And so make sure to spend the time, well, obviously I needed to with my, my family and friends outside of work as well. Uh, I also put bring more donuts because, you know, love to do something to show people you care about them more. So that's what I put. And really, I mean, seriously, nothing says I care more than donuts. You'd be shocked <laughs> on how much uh, productivity. Brisket, uh, brisket actually says you. It just oh, oh no, that's true. true though. Yeah, <laughs> the government depends on like, how much the job pays. Yeah, I was gonna say like. <laughs> uh, all right, who wants to go next? I can go. I was okay. my Funny bone again. Um, so definitely updating my resume. Um, planning a vacation. I'd like to take a break before starting something new. Um, and I would try to request an extension. <laughs> Hopefully I wouldn't have to go anywhere. OK. I'll go next. Mine was uh, be bolder, be kind, and build more relationships. So you wouldn't do that if you if you knew your job was going to be done in a year? That if I knew my job was going to be done in a year, I'd be bolder, yeah. Be bolder, OK. To Nolan? Nolan or Dickie, all right, Nolan. Nolan. Yeah. So I, 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 mine was similar to Steve's, uh, uh, is um, make lasting connections. You know, the people you're working with, your coworker, those could help you later on. Uh, and I guess improve your portfolio, you know, portfolio, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, full disclosure, uh, this, this is a horrible question for me because I've been in the same place for 29 years. So I really, <laughs> I really don't know. I think when my, when, when my job ends, I'll, I'll, they will find me dead. Like, oh, oh, gosh, it's not funny. Right. He was, he was hunched over I, the I, I, I have no plans of leaving anytime soon. That's good. And we have that on video, so that's good. You know, in case the city's watching or anyone from the city. Yeah. So. They, All right. They um, probably don't want you to leave it anyway. So. Well, they, yeah, they may have forgotten I even worked there. That. Might oh, oh my gosh. All right. Uh, who else have I forgotten at this point? Whoever else wants to go? I think it was me. me. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I'd forgotten uh, sweater too, but I was like, no, I forget. All right, no, I <laughs> you, you got a goldfish gave memory, her top sorry. cover. So, uh, so in a nod to Douglas Adams and uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, uh, 42 and grab a towel, <laughs> and then uh, uh, be bold and speak the truth in love because you can speak the truth, <laughs> yes, <that's true. laughs> but you gotta have love when you're doing it. Uh, and then go travel as soon as the gig was up because, you know, high paid consultants and all that. Nice. I would have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither, Tim. Unless anyone wants to call, I mean, you know, it's always a good thing, too. But, you know, but I wouldn't mind the city either. That'd be nice. Um, as long as you got the good people you're working around, good boss. All right. Uh, well, we'll move those over. And uh, we'll move on to the next one. We're going to move on to set three, though, and just do one in set three, just for the sake of time. And uh, 
might shorten the retro a bit to some final thoughts after, but let's roll the dice for 25 through 36 and cast seven again. This thing likes seven. I'm not sure this is a random number generator anymore. All right. The owl goes broken on the back end. <laughs> All right. So I've got that as uh, actually at 25, that should be 32, right? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. No, it's, it's no, it's, it's twenty nine, uh, or thirty one. So, yeah. Tell your partner something that you like about them already. <clears throat> so we have, tell your partner something you like about them already, and Tim's uh, Tim Dickey's version of that is. What would dolphins say about you? Intriguing question. And uh, then we have Tim Nolan, who has asked, tell your coworkers something you like about them already. And then Sweda is give kudos. I'm not sure to who. Um, then Steve's is take a moment to appreciate those around you. And I said something similar to that of tell the person above or below you, I guess in the Zoom, uh, something you like about them already. Is this like Hollywood Square Zoom? Is that what we're yeah. <laughs> referring to? Um, well, I've technically got people in a vertical on my screen that are viewing this right now. So if you want to know who's around you, I can tell you who's around you. You might not know. So that would be interesting uh, if you were to choose mine. But uh, whatever you guys want to do. Got two. I'm not sure if that's mine or someone else's. Did someone else like? Yeah, I, you put mine. yeah I put mine. In. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's all right. All right. So, the question is, uh, what would uh, dolphins say about you? All right. Thank you, Douglas Adams. <laughs> and obviously, this is meant to increase psychological safety, but <laughs> I do not. Uh, know what to do with this, so we're just going to proceed and hope that your team grows closer. <laughs> if you have facilitation comments about how this could have gone better, <laughs> please put it in the comments below. Hey, at least I wasn't bringing up Isaac Asimov, okay? <laughs> All right. Well, while y'all are going or finishing up, I'll go first. I said, I don't squeak as good as them is what I think dolphins will say about me. They uh, would probably think they were smarter than me. Uh, I cannot hold my breath for that long. Is probably what they would think. Um, and, oh, and last one last thing that I didn't write down. I am definitely the fish out of water. Like I do not, I do not do, I do not like water. So uh -huh. uh, I'd be like on the side, like of the dolphin tank, probably. Who else wants to go? I'll go. Uh, my first one is nice. translated. Uh, that is, uh, I enjoy his honesty, if they're talking about me, and, uh, uh, and, and how he wears his heart on his sleeve. I think they would have gotten to know me a little better. Gotcha. I can go. Okay. So I got, uh, thanks for not visiting SeaWorld. And then <laughs> <laughs> And then I got nose rub. I felt like there were no words. That's a good one. Nose rub. <laughs> That's cool. All right, Tim Dickey, uh, Steve. He said he's not a good swimmer. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up with some, some of my favorite thoughts from Douglas Adams. So long. Thanks for all the fish. Um, and how did that work out for you? And uh, <sighs> Told you the aliens were coming, and hope you have a towel. And by the way, the answer is forty-two. So enough already. Okay. All the answers well, are good. Forty-two. Every, yes. <laughs> the entire universe. So uh, this was the game, and uh, the professional love. Uh, the mirror. The template is not on Miro, but the link will be in the description for anyone who's watching, and uh, as well as 
all the links for all the videos that I do. Uh, the templates will always, will always be in the description for you to share with your teams. I am planning on creating uh, mural versions of, uh, of all of these as well, uh, just for backup. Uh, but this is not on the Miroverse. I might try to post this on the Miroverse. I just don't want to take credit for it. Uh, but we'll see if I can uh, co-publish it or something. Uh, anyways, but what did you guys think about this real quick in about uh, just a couple minutes? I, think yeah, I don't know about... Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go on, Tim. I really had nothing, you know, go ahead. I, I really had not much comment. I, I was just going to say that I think it does make you think about some of those personal things in your broader environment or your work environment. Uh, the one thing I did struggle with that maybe it's just because we're such a fun group is staying in the context of work or a team. Like mm -hmm. it, I had a lot of fun. So I was able to like really humor myself, but um, it, it's really good. I can see this as a really good retrospective. Awesome. I think it would have been better if we were on a team. We were just kind of having fun with it. So yeah, it's it's definitely easier to bring in when you're on a team and you're working to have a team context. That's why I have a hard time. Uh, I know like Chris Stone and the Virtual Agile Coach and a couple other people, they create amazing retros and they produce them all the time. But it's really hard when you're not on a team like to be able to demonstrate some of those things. So, uh, but this is, uh, I feel like it's a great game for um, for getting deeper with your teams. So I feel like, you know, Steve produced some deep questions. So, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, to to that end, I really think that it uh, has a potential of creating a, quite a bit of leverage to open up conversations that might normally be um, maybe maybe a little closed off, depending upon what a person's temperament is. Yeah, you know, and, and I I can say this as an introvert. You know, I, I like smaller groups and I don't like necessarily being exposed in front of people. But, um, you know, if if given the opportunity and, and you know, the the right space to self-reflect, this type of uh, retro would certainly be an advantage. Yeah, I, like you how think... it gives, Sorry. I like how it gives authority to the dice. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You have to answer it because the dice told you to. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, the. I will, although I might recommend using, although it's hard to. Have, I guess you have a thirty-two sided die or whatever, or a twelve sided die. But um, I would recommend using an actual die because it seems like the online dice seem to favor seven a lot. But, um, anyways, you're gonna say something, Sweta? Yeah, I was just going to say, while it's, you know, this is presented as a team activity, I can definitely see this as a self-reflection tool, like Tim was uh, saying. Um, it's really cool, like, especially if you've got dysfunctions in a team um, and you just need people to kind of sort themselves out, you can say, hey, you know, like, here's a question, go think about it, you know, make it your own, and then let's bring that back even, right? So um, while it's not in kind of the bigger, wider space, like, you can still kind of hone in and, and kind of focus um, yeah, I think there's many uses of this. Very cool. Wouldn't have mm -hmm. thought about changing the questions ever, but that this, I think that really makes you think. I have a question kind of for the group here. Um, is this something you would do at the beginning of a new team, or is this something you do as a mature team that's been working for a long time? Yeah, I'm going to give you my standard consulting answer. It depends. You've got to, I, I would say that you have to gauge the context of where the team is at in the Tuckman model. Um, you know, I, I think it could definitely be a, um, a storming tool to, to try and hopefully achieve faster alignment uh, and, and point the team in the right direction because, um, you know, there's, there are those moments where there's enough friction to be able to kind of break the context and, and you know, like Sweda was saying, hey, you know, Go, go to your respective corners, think about this and bring back a retooled version of this question. You know, it, it, would, it, it, it would spark hopefully some creative internal dialogue, you know, uh, uh, both internal to the team as well as the members of the team. Um, and then of course, with a more mature team, the, you, there's certainly, you, you, we, I guess, Based on what we did, there's a lot of the, you can you can move it in a lot of different directions. You can really have fun with it to to make make it uh, you know an option for for 
kind of breaking a stressful cycle or, you know, iteration or even, even a, you know, a week's worth or a half a sprint's worth of work, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways that, that I think it could be applied. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, so what is the end result of this activity? You know, so we go through, I mean, what is it, you know, how do we wrap this up? I mean, is this intended to be a retrospective? Is this, you know, what, what did we learn today? It, speaking only for myself, I think, I think this is a great creative outlet to, you know, break the monotony. And, and I know how I am. I get so focused on the work that to be able to pull my head out of that for, for a period of time, I can go back to the work and now go, oh yeah, you know, I, <laughs> there's, I, I do need to take a different view and, and actually ask myself, hey, is this the best way of doing it? You know, and more important, should I ask somebody else if maybe they have a better idea of how it could be done? I think there is also the opportunity to create action items, right? So if, if there's some form of consensus required there, um, there can certainly be a conversation around, you know, what, what is our next action item or what do we want to kind of take forward? I think there's definitely that opportunity. Hey, Steve, you got anything deep and philosophical you want to share on it, man? No, I, well, I was just I was just thinking how it can tell you about people too, the questions they ask. What, what the questions are tells you a lot about the people who are asking, making them up. Mm -hmm. James, you're on mute, man. <laughs> Am I good? No, you are. Oh, cool. Sorry. All right. Wow, um, that was a deep answer, man. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> so, uh, but Sweda inspired me by uh, the um, when she was saying about you know giving someone a question and going away. Like, what if a team had a you know not necessarily a stand up, but like a consistent meeting that you could give someone a question have them make their own questions, do a quick dot vote, learn something new about each other and do this on, on a one-off question basis on a, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis just to learn more about each other. I think that'd be pretty cool as like an icebreaker um, for a team that's, you know, starting and getting, gaining momentum. That's there you go, Tim. See, you've, you've got the full spectrum of it. And actually now, now James, you've got me thinking, um, <laughs> It could actually, um, oh wait, just lost the complete train of thought. Okay, you can post it in the comments below later on the video. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was there. It was, oh. All right, it might come back. I felt it, I felt it. Awesome. it would be great. Well, uh, make sure to like and subscribe everyone. Keep on learning and uh, we'll see you next time.